If you're tired of using the same backdrops over and over again like I was, I'm gonna show you a really cost-effective, easy way to get multiple different looks in your portraits using textures. I'm Kelly Brown, I have been a photographer since 2003 and I've been teaching photographers all over the world since 2012. If this is your first time on my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and if you stick around until the end, I'm going to share a link with you to download a free texture bundle. All right, let's get started. I have a beautiful, beautiful maternity image here and the background is just a very simple painted green canvas. I do love this look, but I'm looking for something a little bit more. Plus, if I'm using it in multiple different setups and I want to create more variety, textures is definitely the one way that I like to do it. So what I'm going to do first is open up my two texture folders and these are actually the free textures that I'm going to share with you in that link. And over here I've got hand painted textures. Now I do love to get messy with paint so I've hand painted all of these myself. This is the third painterly set that I've created so I've got lots of variety and I can tell you it never gets boring. And you can also have lots of fun with these textures. They can be applied to paper backdrops, other canvas backdrops like I'm about to do, and um, flooring and things like that. You can put them pretty much into any scene and they are so versatile that you can change the colors, you can change the, the actual texture itself, and we'll get to that in just a moment. So let's pick the right one. Now I do want to change the overall image. So I don't want to go with anything that's going to be similar to what I've already got. And that's these darker sort of greeny ones. I've got some really great highlighted um, areas in this texture. So I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to select another texture from that free texture pack. Show you how amazing they are to work with. So the first thing I do is these are JPEG files. I open them up into Photoshop. And once I've selected the one I want, I quite like this one here. So what I'm going to do is drag that into Photoshop as well. All right, now that I've got them opened up, um, obviously these are landscape and my image is portrait. That's all right. What I'm going to do is start with my painterly texture here. I'm going to select that entire image, Command A, and I'm going to copy it, Command C. So I'm just using some really quick shortcuts here. All right, I'm going to come back into my file and Command V to paste that image over the top. And OK, right, so I'm going to take it into Transform. And this is where I'm just going to right click and I'm going to rotate my canvas. Now I'm going to go counterclockwise. And you can see at the moment, the lighter part of the image is somewhere around the sort of bottom area of my, my photo there. But if I've got light coming in from the top left, I want that to be higher in the frame. So instead of stretching it or um, adjusting the actual size of it, what I'm going to do is right click again and I'm going to flip it vertically. So now I've got that light coming down and it's following the direction of the light that I used to capture the portrait. And uh, that's exactly what I want to achieve. So I'm just going to hit enter there. I have reduced the opacity to 71%. I'm going to bring that back up to 100. And then I'm going to go through my layer modes. Now this is where you can start to really create some different looks depending on what it is that you want. So if I bring this Bring this image up a little higher. Um, so multiply, obviously it's going to darken that texture. Lighten, not really going to work here. Screen, if you're working with lighter backdrops, the screen mode can actually create some really cool effects. The, the main ones I like to use are probably the overlay and soft light. Now they're going to work in terms of the contrast of the image, but the overlay there that is absolutely beautiful. The soft light is a little bit brighter. Mm, actually, let's go with that soft light. There we go. And that's what I mean. You can have fun. You can just change it around all the time. So I don't want all of that texture to be on 
my client. I want to reduce that texture. I'm not too concerned about the tones coming through onto her skin at the moment, but what I'm going to show you is if we go back to our base image and then we use our select tool, we can go select subject. Alrighty. So now what I'm going to do is sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't obviously select subject, but you'll have to, you know, go through the process of selecting your subject if it doesn't work for you. What I'm going to do now is go up to filter and I'm going to come down to blur and go down to Gaussian blur. So this is where I'm just going to blur all of that texture as much as I possibly can. And now if I hit deselect, I can come in and I've removed the texture of her by blurring it, but I've still got, obviously, um, those tones on her. Now you can leave them on if you want, depending on the look that you're going for, or if you don't want all of those textured colors in the background there, you can actually reduce the saturation of the file itself. So having that layer selected, I'm going to take it into hue and saturation, command U, and I can reduce the saturation now and it goes back to those beautiful green tones that I had on there. Or if I don't want to remove the saturation, I mean, I could even increase it if I wanted to, obviously keeping my eye on pushing those tones out of their gamut. And I can also adjust the hue if I want to and play with them. And if I really wanted to, I could adjust the lightness and the brightness, um, darkness. Okay, so bringing that back to where it was, I'm happy, ex you know, with it being exactly there. But what I am going to do is go back to where I deselected, and this is where I can remove that layer from her. So I can delete it altogether um, just by hitting the delete key. I can obviously use um, masks and things like that. Or if I didn't want it um, taken off the dress and only off the skin, then I would select just the skin. So this is where it's entirely up to you. Um, if I command D to deselect, I can now add a layer mask coming over to my paintbrush, changing it to a black brush. This is where I could come in and take it off just the skin and possibly the hair. So you have full control, and this is what I love about using textures. You can get a lot of different variety and really change things up a bit. One thing that I'm conscious of here at the moment is how strong that texture is on the background. So if I've shot this at a wide aperture, you know, and, and it's meant to be a little softer, if there's parts of her that are not so sharp, but I've got this really sharp background. One thing I do have to be careful of is matching that depth of field. So I'm going to click back over to my layer. I could apply that layer mask if I want to, or I might want to come back and adjust it. And if I have that selected, what I can do is now come up to filter, come down to blur, and I'm not going to blur it by a thousand pixels, but I can start to have a look at softening that texture in the background to make it look more realistic. Blur it too much, it's just gonna look blobby in the background. And another thing is to check throughout the entire image that consistency of sharpness and detail, depending on what you'd shot it at. So I'm gonna come up to about five, maybe six. All right. So now I've got this texture in place and I'm happy with it. I can adjust if I need to, or you can, it's entirely up to you. I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna open up the other texture that I had selected. This one, Command A, Command C to copy. Come back over to my image, Command V. So when you start to layer different textures, you're gonna get another, you're just gonna take it to a whole other level. It's gonna be crazy, right? So let's rotate these. You could flip it, you could do it by right clicking. All right, 
point. So now if we bring back the opacity, you can start to see that texture there applying to the image underneath. All right, so when we start to look at the different modes, we can, you could come into screen if you wanted to and then reduce the opacity and it gives it that sort of cloudy look, which is really pretty cool. You can bring it down to soft light. Let's bring that opacity up. And now we're starting to look like we've got something very different here. So I do love to check all of my options out. And I think that soft light option is going to be the best. Okay, so now I'm just going to adjust the opacity and go through all of those same steps again. And down here, now that I've got my additional texture, what I can do is start to bring it back Now, if I want to continue playing with this, I'm going to lighten it just a little. So I've gone into curves, command M, and now I'm starting to bring the mid-tones of that texture up. Yeah, I like that. That is very, very different. Alrighty, so I wanna go back to my base layer. I'm gonna go back to my select tool select subject and this is where I can blur it again or I can delete it it's entirely up to you so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that selection and we don't want that on her at all this is just one of those layers that's going to just add to that background nice and then adjusting to taste so again like you can just have so much fun with these it is ridiculous I'm going to show you something I did before to even actually go a little bit further with these what you can do if you're finding that there's still so much sharpness and texture hitting the edges you can blur the edges of your frame which will really help bring it down you can add more light to your textures you can use the gradient tool to really change them up um, and have a lot of fun so just double check that i'm happy with where that is i might just bring that opacity up just a bit there we go I mean, and you could keep playing for hours. Now, I've got that layer selected, the first one we did. I've used the square marquee tool, and I've selected just inside the edge of the frame. Now I'm going to feather that by a lot, 555 pixels. Give me a nice soft edge, and I'm going to invert that selection coming up to filter blur, down to Gaussian blur and we'll blur all of that. And that'll kind of just soften that edge there. Beautiful. All right. So that's kind of it. What I'd done before with another texture was create something even more different. So this texture here is from the painterly set. It is, come on, this texture right here. Okay, so you can see it's quite an odd texture and you're probably thinking, what would I use that on? And it's how I achieved this image. So what I did was I came in, selected my texture, Command C, and brought it over, and I pasted it into the image. I rotated it so it was the same size, same shape. I then desaturated it using hue and saturation. I took all of the tone out to give it that beautiful gray look. So there it is there. And then I added a solid color layer. Um, to my image 
and I removed it from the skin. So I just picked a random color and you could do this as well. You make it blues, greens, yellows, reds, reds beautiful. And you can have lots of fun, obviously, um, you know, changing it all over the image to give it even more variety. So that's pretty much what I do when I'm looking for something a little different and I don't want to paint a new backdrop or I don't want to buy a new backdrop and it gives you the ability to create something that's unique and it's you. You have full control over everything that you do. Okay, so if you want to give this a try, click on that link. You can download your free texture pack. And if you want to share them with me, what you create, make sure you tag me on Instagram at Kelly Brown Photographer. And if you've got any questions, pop them into the comments below and I'll come back a little later and answer them. Thanks for watching.